Hello everyone, this is Pet Pet Crochets. Welcome back to a new video. In today's video, we're going to be learning how to make these really cute, beginner-friendly ruffle shorts. These ruffle shorts are definitely a closet staple, especially for the summertime. I wore them to the beach, to the pool, and just lounging around in my home. They're going to be based on your measurements and completely customizable. So here are just some of the measurements I took. I'm a size extra small. I took my waist measurement, which is 25 inches, my high hip, which was 28 inches, and then my hips, which is 35 inches. And we're going to make a foundation double crochet chain to the width that we desire. I actually ended up doing my high-waisted area, so this ended up being 25 inches long. So to get started, you can grab any yarn and any size hook really. I'm using a DK weight 3 yarn and a 6.5 millimeter hook. We're going to start with a chain up of three and then we're going to make foundation double crochet stitches. So you're gonna go back into that very first chain that you made, grabbing the front and the back loop. You're going to pull up a loop yarn over and you're going to pull over the top loop which is going to be the foundation and then you're just going to do a double crochet so yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two more now you're always going to be working into this v shape in the back here closest to the yarn so let's do that again we're putting our hook into that v shape grabbing the front and the back loop we're going to pull up a loop yarn over pull through the top and then you're going to do a double crochet so yarn over pull through two and then yarn over and pull through two more for a double crochet I like to do this because it avoids having to do a foundation chain first and then going back to do the double crochet row so it kind of just consolidates the process and you're just going to do this to the desired length or the width of where you want the waistband to start so for me, it was about 25 inches long. I wanted it to be high-waisted shorts. Once you reach your desired length, you just want to straighten this out so it's facing on the same direction. And to connect the two ends together, you're going to place your hook into the top of that stitch right there, grabbing the front and the back loop, the top of that very first double crochet foundation stitch that we made. And we're going to do a slip stitch so you're going to pull the yarn all the way through to both sides and this will join the two ends together now you're going to do a chain up of two and turn your work we're going to start adding our double crochets so you're going to go into the very next stitch you're skipping the stitch where we did the chain two so you're going to the next stitch and you're going to do a double crochet now you're going to be making a double crochet into every single stitch and I'm going to show you how we're going to end the round and join the two ends together. So I'll meet you back on the other side. Now we made it all the way back around and to join the two ends together we're doing a slip stitch into the top of that chain two that we made earlier when we're returning our work. So again for a slip stitch you're just going to place your hook into the top of that chain two and pull the yarn all the way through to the other side and that will join the two ends together and finish the round. To begin the next row or the next round, we're going to do a chain up of two and turn our work. Once again, we're just adding a row of double crochets. So we're skipping that very first stitch connected to chain two. And we're going to the very next stitch and we're just adding a double crochet into every single stitch. Once we get to the end, I'll show you guys one more time how I joined the two ends together with a slip stitch. We made it back to the other side. So again, we're going to go into the top of that chain two. And you're going to put your hook into the front and the back loop and you're going to do a slip stitch. So you're just pulling the yarn all the way through and that will join the ends together and complete the round. Now I'm just going to add one more row of double crochet. This is going to be the waistband for my shorts and I wanted the waistband to be about two inches in length so I had enough space later on to add the tie for my shorts. Again, these shorts are completely customizable. 
If you want them to start increasing sooner, you can skip these steps and add just one or two rows of double crochet and go straight into the increases. Now we're going to do the increases and this is to accommodate for our hips. You want to place the middle seam directly in the center of our work and find the two stitches on the sides of the shorts. This is where we're going to be increasing for our hip width. For this row, we're going to be doing our increase. So you're just going to double crochet until you reach a stitch marker. At the stitch marker, we're going to be doing an increase by adding two double crochets into that stitch. I've now reached the stitch marker. I'm going to remove the stitch marker and add two double crochets into this stitch. So there's my first one. And back into that very, very same stitch, I'm adding one more double crochet. So we're increasing by one into the stitch marker. Then I'm just putting my stitch marker back so I know where to continue doing the increases. And then you're just going to double crochet into every stitch until you reach the other stitch marker where we're doing another increase for the other side. I made it to the other stitch marker, so I'm going to remove the stitch marker and add one double crochet. And then back into that very same stitch, I'm adding one more double crochet for an increase. So two double crochets to the same stitch. And don't forget to put your stitch marker back so you know where to increase. And then you're going to finish off by double crocheting and then you're going to slip stitch the two ends together to finish this round. For my shorts, I want to do alternating rows of increases and no increases until I reach the width of my hips. So I'm just going to show you guys how I do a no increase row. So you're just going to double crochet until you reach a stitch marker. Once you reach a stitch marker, you're just going to remove the stitch marker and add one double crochet into that stitch. I'm not doing an increase, so I'm just placing one double crochet and putting the stitch marker right back. Since these shorts are based on your measurements, if you find that you need them to increase more dramatically, you can do rows of increases rather than alternating like I did. And if you find that it's increasing too much, you can do two rows of no increases and one row of increase. You're going to continue crocheting rows, so I did alternating increase and no increase rows, until you reach your hip width. You can also just keep trying these on until they fit around your hips or you can use a tape measure. So at the end, I had about 17 and a half inches folded, which is about 35 inches, which is the measurement of my hip. And this was about nine inches long. Now we're going to add no increased rows, just regular rows until we reach our crotch region. So that was just about three or four rows for me. Again, you can just keep trying them on until it reaches the point where we want to start the crotch for our shorts. You're going to place the seam of the shorts directly in the center of the pants and make sure that both sides are even. And now we're going to take a stitch marker and we're going to mark directly on the other side. This is where we're going to attach our crotch chain. So the center of the other side right there. And for this portion, I chose a four millimeter hook I wanted the crotch region to have tighter stitches, so I chose a smaller hook. But again, if you're using a different size needle, do what you feel is best for your shorts. Now you're just going to make a chain until it is the desired length for the crotch region of the shorts. I did a chain up until about two and a half inches long. So here I am just continuing my chain and now it's about two and a half inches. And I'm ready to connect this chain to the other side back into that stitch marker we placed earlier. So that's the center of the other side. So I'm removing the stitch marker, placing my hook in, and we're going to connect this chain to the other side by doing a slip stitch. So you're just going to grab the yarn and pull all the way through. Once we complete the slip stitch, now the chain should be connected to the other side and we can work on our pant leg or short leg. So I put my other needle back in and I'm doing a chain up of one. And now you're going to be adding a double crochet across that chain that we made, but just into the top loops. We're working just into the top loop because when we work on the other side, we're going to be working into the back loop. 
So just add a double crochet into the top loop of every stitch along the chain. Once you reach the other side of this chain, you're just going to continue adding double crochets all the way around the leg hole opening. And then I'll show you guys how to finish off the round with a slip stitch. So I'll meet you guys back on the other side where we meet back where we made that first double crochet along the chain. So we made it back. This is the chain and the double crochets that we made for the chain and I went all the way around and we're back to the beginning. To finish off this row, we're going to be doing a slip stitch to join the two ends together. You're going to place your hook into the top of that very first double crochet we made along the chain and pull the yarn all the way through for a slip stitch. Now for the next round, we're going to start off with a chain up of one and we're going to add a double crochet into every single stitch all the way around and I'll meet you guys back to the beginning and show you guys one more time how I do this slip stitch to join the two ends together. We made it back to the other side. Now we're going to place our hook back into the top of that double crochet we did and join the ends with a slip stitch. So you're just going to continue doing this until you reach your desired length for your shorts. I only did two rows because I wanted them to be short shorts. So when you're done, you can just do a chain up of one, cut and secure the yarn. Now we're ready to start the other side. You're going to find the second stitch from the crotch chain that we made earlier and place your hook and slip knot there. Once your slip knot is secure, you're going to add a double crochet into the very next stitch. And then you're going to start placing double crochets along the back loop. So this is the loops that were left behind when we did the other pant leg or short leg where we're working into the top loops. So you're going to add a double crochet into every single one until you reach the other side. Once you reach the other side into the very next stitch right there, we're going to do a slip stitch to finish this round. For my next and final round, I'm doing a chain up of one and doing a double crochet into every single stitch. When we get to the other side, I'm going to do a slip stitch into the top of that double crochet right there. And that will finish off my second round. I only did two rounds for my shorts. Now instead of chaining one and cutting, I'm placing a smaller hook for the ruffle. So I'm using a size four millimeter hook. And into those posts, these double crochet posts, you're going to be adding five double crochets. So those little bars right there under the double crochet stitch, I'm adding five double crochets. So the hook should go behind the post right there. And we're adding five double crochets. Now to start the next ruffle, I'm doing a chain up of one. I'm skipping one of these posts. So I'm skipping that very next post right there. And I'm going to the next one and adding five double crochets. So this is a pattern you're going to keep repeating for these ruffles. I wanted my ruffles to be not so tight and close together. That's why I skipped one post. But if you want more ruffles, you can definitely go into every single post. And I wanted the stitches for my ruffles to be tighter together. That's why I used a smaller size hook. But again, if you prefer to use the same size needle, you could do so. Once you finish the ruffles, you're just going to slip stitch back into the top of that very first double crochet we made. And we're going to chain up one, cut and pull the yarn through to secure and finish off the ruffles for the pant leg. For the other side, we're going to start with a slip knot and you can go into any stitch along the leg opening and secure the slip knot. Once that's secure, we're adding five double crochets into the post. So right there, you're going to place your hook behind that post right there and add five double crochets. So basically, we're repeating the pattern. Once you finish five, you're going to do a chain up of one, skip a post and go into the next post until you finish. When you're done, you can chain up one, cut and pull the yarn through to secure. Now we're going to work on the tie for the waistband. This is just going to be a quick version of how I made the tie for the waistband. So you're going to start with a slip knot and place that on your hook. And then you're just going to chain until it's your desired length for the tie of the waistband. 
once you get to the length that you desire you're just gonna go down along the chain that you made and put your hook in and do a single crochet for single crochet you're putting a hook in pulling up a loop yarning over and pulling through two loops on your hook and you're just going to place a single crochet down along the chain into every single stitch and that will complete your tie here I'm just showing you guys how I added a little bead detail to the end of my tie. This is just so that the tie doesn't slip through or move around the waistband. Whether or not you have a bead or something at the end here, you're going to want to secure the ends with a knot. This is after you weave the tie through the top of your shorts along the waistband. You don't want to add the knots before you add the tie along the waistband. Once you finish adding the tie along the waistband and added your knots, all you have left to do is to take your darning needle and weave in all the little ends. When we're all done, this is what the final product should look like. These shorts are perfect to make if you're a beginner. The ruffles add such a nice texture and detail to the shorts and they're definitely a summertime closet staple. If you guys like this tutorial, please like, comment, and subscribe. I have many more tutorials on the way. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye, everyone.